What do these used batteries have in common with this concrete egg? The answer is this chemical right here. It's called manganese oxide. It can be found in alkaline batteries. It's used as a cathode in the batteries, but when the batteries reach the end of their life, we can extract the manganese oxide, wash it, and then use it to color concrete. To give us a hand visualizing the color difference between this concrete egg and just regular ready mix concrete, we just have to take a look at this hand. As you can see, uh, this one did not come out of the mold very well, but there is quite a dramatic color difference. I personally think that the uh, dark egg concrete looks way better than concrete without pigment altogether. Maybe not for all applications, but uh, I think it worked out great for this egg. So your first step to safely dismantling these batteries to harvest some of this manganese oxide for coloring concrete. Right now I've got some D-cell batteries just out of uh, my battery collection bin. These are nice because they're really big so you get a lot of chemical per battery. It's just worth your while compared to like a double A or a triple A. Those are still, those will still do, but D cells are, uh, yeah, just, just more bang for your buck. But what you'll wanna do is just check and make sure that they are discharged. You can see here, I've got one 1.198. These are 1.5 volt cells. So this is quite a bit discharged, but I had one here that was, yeah, you can see 1.565. So whatever this came out of, it might've just been that it was in one of my kids' toys or something <clears throat> and the toy was broken. I'm not gonna take that one apart because uh, it's a little bit more dangerous actually taking them apart when they still have quite a bit of charge in them. You wanna aim for ones that are like really discharged. Always wear these and gloves. Inside these batteries, there's electrolyte. Um, I think in these, it's probably like a, sodium hydroxide uh it will it'll burn you it'll give you caustic burns on your skin so you don't want to you don't want to get that on your skin definitely want to protect yourself first thing i do just try and peel off as much of this outside as you can that'll allow us to get inside the battery a little easier all right i got a couple peeled batteries here what you're going to want to do to take these apart, this end, that just popped right off. So you're going to need a pair of side cutters or pliers or something like that. Knife. Once you get them peeled off, you're going to want to start uh, getting this piece here off. Got the rod right out of there. Discard that. Now, see what we're left with. There's a bit of a crimp there. The other end is just blank. Now this crimp. You have to peel that back. This point is where most people assume the battery is going to explode in their face. Uh, this is where discharged battery, that's where that comes into play. If it's still charged up, I've had them before where I've accidentally taken them apart and they still had, you know, most of a full charge. The, when you puncture the cell, the, I'm not really even sure why this happens, but it does seem like when they're charged, the, the electrolyte is a lot more liquid. Um, I've had it squirt out at me. Yeah, see, I'm into the cell. You can see that there's a little bit of, I don't know if you can tell, a little bit liquid going on there, but uh, nothing too crazy. It's not popping out at me. And that sort of dark brown black stuff that you're seeing, that actually right there is the chemical that we're going after. Let's 
some of these batteries you can actually harvest zinc metal as well <clears throat> but this casing is just steel continue working here so just to give you an idea of what we're working with this material on the outside the dark stuff that is the manganese oxide that's the cathode in these batteries now this stuff in the middle here it looks probably like a bluish gray um, that's called uh, zinc oxide paste that is the anode uh, and that stuff is that's why I've got these metal trays behind me. You'll see why now when I pull it out. Um, it reacts with, I think it's actually with the moisture in the air. If I was to put uh, water directly onto it, you'd probably see a uh, pretty decent exothermic chemical reaction. But even just from the moisture in the air, it is going to start getting hot once we get that out of there, especially if we kind of break it apart a little bit. Maybe I'll even show you on the FLIR camera. Uh, it can get hot enough to uh, probably even melt a plastic container if you put it in something like that. So you definitely want to be cognizant of that if you're ever taking these apart. Uh, yeah, do not take them apart unless you know what you're doing. And one thing that you're going to need to know is that that stuff gets quite hot. Oh, as you can see, case came right off. So the actual manganese oxide can be collected in you know pretty much any container it's pretty much safe to collect it in i'm going to collect it just in this plastic well i might have to show you on a different battery how the zinc oxide heats up um, did a bit of an oopsie there and there was a little bit more electrolyte in this one than i had anticipated so, yeah, it didn't really come apart the way that I was hoping. Uh, I think actually maybe most of these batteries were more charged up than I thought they were. I mean, I know the, the voltage was down from 1.5. I probably should have just searched through my bin and found one that was uh, even more dead than the one that I chose. Although I know for sure that this one was not, uh, not working in a known good toy. So uh, the battery was definitely uh, at least, you know, let's say 80% discharged. Either way, at this point, I'm going to start crushing up this manganese oxide. Get it ready for some purification. This battery looking a lot more like what I'm used to. Uh, and this is the same Duracell. So the first one that I took apart, I don't know if it was still way more charged than I thought it was or if it was a defective battery, but um, yeah, what I'm seeing here is exactly what I'm used to seeing. This is the zinc powder and it's going to be a solid. And it looks like this. I'm going to put it in this bowl here. Where am I? No. I'm going to use a different one. I'm going to put it in here because I don't want to put it with the stuff from the last battery just in case. And I'll show you when I break this apart that it is going to warm up quite a bit. And this paper here is just an insulator to protect it from coming into contact directly with the... Uh, with the cathode. All right. And there's our zinc. As you can see, my table out here is about 15 degrees and this stuff is already heating up. 55, 56, 
57, yeah, it's still warming up. I'm gonna give it a bit and see what it warms up to. Uh, hopefully you can still see. I saw 70 something degrees there a second ago. Oh, yeah, 72. 73, still climbing. <clears throat> so yeah, that is why you wanna put this in a metal bowl. Cause uh, you don't wanna burn your house down. So a lot of you are probably gonna wonder how I get this so finely powdered. I do use a blender. I am not recommending that you use a blender, but that is what I use. Um, you would be much safer just to manually grind this down or use a mortar and pestle or something. Uh, I am gonna use this blender after I get these into some smaller chunks. Obviously chunks like this, I could have probably shatter the, the blender, but uh, that is what I'm gonna do. I do have adequate ventilation. I'm going to fire that on here. Uh, you know, needless to say, um, you don't want to breathe this. So don't be a dummy like me. Luckily, it didn't break right apart. And I was able to blend it up really nice and fine. But this is only like my second time using this one. And yeah, I'm going to need to pile a bunch of tape on there to prevent it from blowing apart on me. Grind it up somehow else. All right, and now we wash. Got myself a coffee filter. Doesn't need to be anything special. I'm put the mayonnaise in here. This is actually different from how I did it last time. <clears throat> but last time I remember saying to myself, I should have done it this way. So I'm going to try this. Let's see if it goes kind of how I was hoping it would. Yeah, it seems to be going pretty good. So what's going to happen here is the electrolyte that's currently in the manganese uh, is soluble in water. But the manganese is not. There are other contaminants in the manganese right now that are also not soluble in water. So this is not going to wash those out, but most of those are not going to affect uh, concrete, uh, at least not in the small amount that we use as a colorant. The other, the, the only other contaminant that can actually be easily removed is graphite, because uh, if you mix it up with a spoon, say, and do this um, and give it time to settle, the manganese will settle, settle at the bottom of, of a slurry and the graphite will float to the top and at that point you can just scoop it off. Uh, I did that on my last batch, but after a bit of research it seems like a small amount of graphite and concrete is actually not really a bad thing. Uh, allegedly there's even some studies that suggest that a really small amount might even act as a pozzolan, so it could actually be kind of a positive thing, so I'm not even going to bother with trying to remove it. All right, put in the rest. Wash a little more. Now, if you were getting really picky, you could wash it a few times. I'm just probably going to do it once. So yeah, this process does take a while. But as you can see, look how clear that water is. I know it's a little bit murky. Uh, that's actually just because the container itself was murky before I even started using this to filter through. I think I may have had some uh, dried manganese in there before. But the water that's dripping down, uh, because the manganese is not uh, not soluble in water, the water that's dripping down is actually quite clear. Well, there you go. We're at a point now where it's really stopped dripping. There is still quite a bit of moisture there, but uh, that's just going to have to be dried out. Either left to air dry, or you can dry it in an oven as well. This stuff, I'm just going to let air dry. So for now, let's 
kind of give her the tea bag treatment there. At the risk of sounding weird. Uh oh. That's what I was afraid of happening. Alright. Not a half bad yield for two D batteries. That would actually, that, that right there would probably color, uh, honestly, probably more than a full bag of concrete. You really don't need much. Eh, maybe, yeah, maybe like one bag of concrete. When you're doing small pieces like me, you like this would last you for quite a while. And there you have it, guys. Once this is dried out, it'll be ready for use in concrete. Feel free to like and subscribe, or even just leave a suggestion in the comments for what I should make with this stuff next.